Hello, I'm going to uh, discuss and demonstrate some aspects of temperature and internal energy. Here I have a statement about uh, temperature. Temperature is a measure of the average random kinetic energy of the atoms and molecules in a substance. Whereas internal energy is the thermal kinetic energy plus potential energy of interaction of all the atoms and molecules in a substance. Now I'm going to uh, demonstrate some aspects of temperature. Here I have a molecular motion simulator. And in this uh, chamber here, I have some uh, glass beads, similar to the glass beads that I have in, uh, in this jar here. I'll show you that these are just glass beads. I'll pour them from one jar into the other. And uh, so we just have some glass beads. And then on, this, uh, on the bottom of this, there's a disc that spins. And when I turn that on, that disc will spin. It's got some little bumps on it that will send those beads flying around in there. And those beads will move around and simulate, uh, as we increase the speed of the beads, it will simulate an increase of temperature inside of this uh, chamber here. So when I turn that on, you'll see the beads speed up, and you'll see the pressure tend to build up on the bottom surface of this plate. That'll push this plate up and cause the volume to expand as a result of that temperature increase. So I have a light there to help illuminate those beads, and then I'll uh, turn a switch here, and that'll start those beads into motion. So as we increase the uh, speed of the beads, that simulates an increase in temperature, and, uh, of course, if it's a gas, it'll cause the gas to uh, tend to expand. Uh, now I'd actually like to uh, demonstrate uh, real temperature here. With the aid of our digital thermometer, we see that it's reading a temperature now in the room here. Uh, the probe here measures the temperature. The end of this probe has a, a sensor that measures the temperature. And uh, this readout here is reading about 19 degrees Celsius right now. That corresponds to a temperature of about 66 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, and uh, here I have some liquid thermometers. Uh, one reads Celsius and one reads Fahrenheit, and the Celsius is reading about 19 or 20 degrees uh, Celsius, and the uh, Fahrenheit thermometer is reading about uh, 66 uh, or 67 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. So uh, that's the temperature in the room. Now let me measure the temperature of the water here. Uh, Again, temperature is a measure of how fast the molecules are moving. It's a measure of the random uh, kinetic energy due to the translation of motion of the molecules. So it's a measure of how fast those molecules are bouncing around. That's true whether it's a liquid or whether it's a solid or whether it's a gas. And uh, so let's uh, go ahead and add some heat to this water and see if we can raise the temperature. And then we'll talk about that as we... Uh, as we increase the temperature of the water. The water temperature now is reading about uh, 20 degrees Celsius. That corresponds to about 68 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, let's add some heat energy by uh, lighting this uh, flame under the beaker. And I'd like to raise the temperature of the water by about uh, 10 Celsius degrees. And so we'll see that water start to heat up. So now we have uh, the water temperature up to 30 degrees uh, Celsius, and that corresponds on a Fahrenheit scale to uh, about 86 degrees. And uh, we talk about what's happened there. We've added heat energy to the water, and the water uh, temperature has been raised through 10 Celsius degrees. Now it turns out that it takes one calorie to raise the temperature of one gram of water through one Celsius degrees. Here we have 100 grams of water, and we raise the temperature through 10 Celsius degrees. So that took 1,000 calories of heat energy in order to uh, raise that temperature of the water by 10 Celsius degrees. 
Turns out there's another way to change the temperature of the water and another way to add energy to a system, and that's by doing work. And now what I'd like to do is uh, go to the back room and uh, measure uh, on our, uh, in our shop in the back room uh, a temperature increase as a result of work being done on a nail. So here we are in a back room, and I have a, I have a nail here, a rather large nail used to tie railroad ties together. And I have a grinder here, and I'm going to let the grinder do some work on the nail and thereby raise the temperature of the nail and therefore the internal energy of the nail by doing work rather than by adding heat as we did uh, with the water in the other room. Let me measure the temperature of the nail here with this digital thermometer. I've uh, blunted the end of the nail and, uh, and uh, drilled a hole in it so I could put this uh, thermometer probe into the nail. And so I'll put this thermometer into the nail and we measure the temperature of the nail to be around, uh, when this comes to equilibrium here, around uh, 23 degrees uh, Celsius. I'm going to show that we'll raise the temperature significantly above that 23 degrees Celsius uh, by doing some uh, work on the nail. And uh, so I'm going to uh, grind on the nail. So I've been grinding on the nail for about 20 seconds and I'm going to put this probe in the nail and see what the uh, temperature now reads of the nail. You can see it's uh, up above 100 degrees Celsius, 170, 80, 190, 193. Should be hot enough to, uh, to boil some water. So we've raised the temperature significantly of the nail. And if I put this uh, probe back in the cool water here, measure the temperature of that water, and uh, we'll see what this hot nail does to that uh, water as I put the uh, hot end of the nail back into the water. So now what I want to do is, is grind on the nail again. And this time, notice as I grind on the nail, there'll be some hot sparks flying off. The temperature of those spark sparks is hot because we're adding energy by doing work and raising the temperature of those little uh, particles of, of matter that come off as sparks. And uh, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this nail, it's hot and the heat is being conducted up here near my finger so I need to keep moving my hand back a little bit, and put it in the water and see if we can bring that water, at least locally near the end of the nail, to a boil. So let me go ahead and do some more grinding on this. And then I'll put it in the water here and watch for steam to form on the surface of this, near the end of the nail here, as I put this in the water. Indicating that the nail is uh, very hot indeed. So we've seen that we can uh, in significantly increase the temperature of the nail as indicated by the reading on the thermometer is indicated by uh, getting steam from the water. Uh, the sparks uh, were at a high temperature uh, as indicated by their color and the fact that they gave off light. And also, the end of the nail has been uh, discolored uh, due to the oxidation process. It's temperature sensitive and requires a high temperature in order to discolor the end of the nail in that fashion. So we've seen that we've increased the temperature of the nail, in this case, not by adding heat energy as we did on the water in the other room, but by doing work with the grinder, the grinder does work on the nail and increases its internal energy.